It's picture postcard pretty in the western part of New Jersey. Peaceful lakes, perfect homes, and beautiful views. Yet this paradise is troubled. I'm very worried about the health of my children. From the Delaware Water Gap to Roseland at the tip of Essex County, we heard the same thing. I'm worried about the children getting ill. Entire communities are worrying about PSE&G's Susquehanna Roseland project. It will dramatically increase the amount of electricity surging through power lines. Now, at community meetings, people are angry. Your kids ain't out there playing underneath this damn thing as you hear it come. Existing lines have carried electricity bound for Essex and Bergen counties through these communities since 1927. People haven't objected until now. We just moved here. We just bought the house a year ago and, and just never imagined that this type of change could happen. Change will more than double the size of the transmission towers, and there will be nearly three times the amount of electricity. It will jump from 230,000 volts to 730,000 volts. It'll be 193 feet high. It'll bring the, the power lines up, but it'll also increase the capacity almost threefold. Byram City Councilman Scott Olson walked the lines with us in Sussex County. It's very close to these homes. You've, right. you've got people who are living 75, 80 feet away uh, they've got children, they've got a playground, you know, it, it's a definite health concern for me. The health concern is whether an increase in the electromagnetic field, or EMF, poses a danger. Well, what is the minimum that's allowed? Scott Klinger and his wife have two children. They built their house in Frieden nine years ago. We're all afraid. We're, we're very afraid of uh, how this whole thing shakes out. And you're afraid because of the value of your house? Sure, the value of my house. But for families, there's a bigger issue. I'm more concerned with the safety of my children and the children of the county. Because? Because of EMFs and the unknowns. Unknowns include possible cancer risks. In Morris County, Ethel Pearson, broken foot and all, has been going door to door to alert her neighbors in East Hanover. I didn't realize myself how serious it was. She lives behind the current towers, and she thinks that EMFs may have caused her two grown daughters to develop cancer. When you go door to door, you realize how many cases of cancer there really is. On one block here in East Hanover, out of seven homes, cancer struck six families. There have been brain tumors in three families. Richard Lowing had a brain tumor and cancer. Nobody told me it was dangerous. When, when you I, moved in? When I moved in, they said it was perfectly safe. And now that they're going to double the size? Well, I'm, I'm really concerned about that. Studies have found that childhood leukemia is linked to exposure to electromagnetic fields. But scientists say there's no scientific evidence that EMFs and power lines cause cancer. In a report, the National Institutes of Health say they haven't been able to conclusively prove a connection. We're still missing some scientific evidence to be conclusive, to say absolutely this is what causes these cases of disease. Dr. Dan Wartenberg at the University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey worked on the national report, but he remains concerned. I think there's more evidence suggesting it does cause cancer than not, so I worry and say that the degree that one can reduce exposure or not be there is better. You can't put us in harm's way. East Hanover Mayor Joseph Benullo speaks for many. If there's one one-hundredth of a chance that this can cause cancer or can cause an illness to uh, some of our residents, it has to be stopped. But stopping it may be difficult because it's tied into a regional power grid issue. Give the people here a guarantee that it's not going to be uh, have an ill effect on their health. Right. That's their main concern here. It's just too close, this. too dangerous. A company called PJM Interconnection determined the need. PJM provides wholesale electricity for 13 states, including New Jersey. And it asked PSE&G to expand power capability to ensure that there is enough power for northern New Jersey. We see circuits being overloaded as early as 2013, which can result in brownouts or blackouts. Chris Hanneman is PSE&G's lead engineer on the project. Mm -hmm. It's one thing is, is people don't like this project. We recognize that. But we also have to balance that with the need to, to ensure that we have a safe, reliable electric power system. That's why PSE&G has been going from town to town trying to convince the skeptics. We benefit from being part of a 13-state grid. But communities remain opposed. You guys better pick another room, or you're going to have a big problem. You can't do anything you want. How about the health issues? God's watching. Put your look at that child and tell me that there's no health issues. PSE&G says new towers will cut the level of the electromagnetic field. Yet residents wonder why the lines can't be run underground.
it's not a proven technology. We have existing underground lines in northern New Jersey at lower voltages. It isn't really an option for a 500 line. Or along I-80. Why not go along the highway? Actually, the DOT requirements is, does not allow for parallel of transmission lines along the right of way. They also question whether more power is needed. There's no proof that they need to add to these wires, so why put people at risk? Even if communities continue to fight, because this involves interstate electricity, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission can override all objections. So opponents of the plan think in order to change it or stop it, they will have to take their battle to court, and we'll be following the story. In Easttown over, Barbara Nevins-Taylor, Unit 9.